Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Count it up, count it up, count it up, count it, count it up, count it up, count it up, count it, count it up, count it up, count it up, count it. Choose wisely. Well, welcome into the Be Legendary podcast. I got my boy Danny Pessy here for an interview. Um, what's up, man? Thanks for coming on. Hey, man. Good to see you, man. Thanks for having me in. Nice spot you got here. Driving through the area, stop, you know, stop by, say hello to my buddy, and spit some knowledge on some of the. <laughs> and some spit of the some knowledge he will. Um, one thing I remember about Danny, just from the beginning of time that I met him about ten years ago, is always the light of a room, uh, light of the conversation, and he'll he'll throw some knowledge down on you. So. I guess just to get the ball rolling, man, uh, what got you into sales, if you want to say a little bit about yourself. Cool, man. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. Um, plan on making this fun so you guys have something entertaining to watch. I actually started doing this job. I was an amateur comedian, and uh, I started doing this job to make money so I could afford, perform and do uh, shows. So my first summer I went out, I was running a comedy club at my college, the first one ever at uh, the college that I was at. And um, I spent full time, nothing but theater, in the theater all day, um, working on shows, working on performances, and that was my passion. I was like, dude, I want to be a, I want to be a theater major, and I want to be a professional comedian. So I went out, I uh, scraped up some money my first summer, made enough money to where I could buy uniforms for my troop, and then uh, save up a little bit of money for some theater time because in Hollywood, unfortunately, if you want to make it, you've got to start. You got to spend some money if you want to get your foot in the door. So um, nothing's free. Nothing's free, man. So uh, basically, I went out my first year, bought the uniforms, bought a little stage time, um, and was able to go out for eight months and just strictly focus on theater. And four months, I went out and worked. Um, I work with a company that does alarm systems, uh, Vivint Inc. And basically, we've designed a program so in four months you can make enough money to where you can live without the entire year without having to get a job. So that obviously appealed to me being a theater major. So what I did was I took full advantage of it, worked my butt off for four months, and then came back and was like, all right. It's go time. I got a little bit of money in my pocket. Let's go ahead and start doing this. So um, the comedy troupe I started was called Grizzle Chuck. Okay, Grizzle, Grizzle Chuck. Chuck. You YouTube it. There's a, <laughs> we have a documentary on YouTube too as well. It was a lot of fun doing it. Just me and a couple of my boys um, put together. Uh, we do a, a thing called short form improv comedy. There's uh, like whose lines it anyway. Yeah. Essentially, we would do that, but on a much uh, more amateur level, obviously. So uh, what we would do is we'd go rent out a theater and perform once or twice every month. Um, I remember going out um, uh, in my college, we had an hour long lunch, like a break between 12 and one, and uh, we'd go and put shows on during that time. So what I would do is I'd go out and grab guys and hey, come watch my show, come watch my show. And uh, not too many people did it, so eventually we were like, all right, we're just gonna buy food. Let's just feed the entire school. So one day I dropped like 500 bucks and bought a bunch of tacos, and we packed this little theater full of people, and we put on a show, and it was just one of the most fun experiences I've ever had, just uh, going out there and just performing for like 35, 40 minutes. And you know, that was one of my big things. And so yeah. <clears throat> I, I started doing that, but then what happened with, this, uh, with the sales thing is, um, you know, my first year I did it, the second year I went out and I got a little bit better, I doubled my income. And then the third year went out, I tripled my income, and that's when I essentially, at 21, I cleared six figures. Wow. And um, I was like, dude, I've never seen this kind of money before. And I was like, this thing's kind of legit. So yeah. um, that's when I started, okay, maybe I should kind of take this more serious, because the theater troupe was fun, and I had a really good time doing it, just at, like being in, at an amateur level, you're not making big money yeah. unless you're on TV and stuff. So. Um, I was like, all right, man, let's give this thing a run. So I, the next year I went out and I took a little time off of theater and really focused on this alarm cool. thing. And year four is when it really picked up for me. And I think I went out and was number one rep at the second largest security company in the country. Um, I cleared 350 accounts, uh, managed a 2,400 account team, and cleared, I think it was like over 325 grand as a 22-year-old. So <laughs> I was uh, I was living on popping cloud bottles. nine. Popping bottles. Oh, and, man, that's, blew it. and that's the thing. So Danny and I actually started at the same alarm company. It's no longer in business, RIP Platinum Protection. And... Um, you know, what I noticed is our first year, I'd say we were pretty average reps, like yeah. 70, 75 accounts. And I remember the next year I doubled what I had done. But a few years afterwards, it's something that's always stuck with me. I asked Danny, I said, you know, you went from being average, right, or basic to being legendary. Um, I guess for you, where did the switch kind of turn and what things did you focus on to go from just being average to, okay, now I'm going to, you know, clear $300,000 as a 22-year-old? Yeah, so... Um I kind of give you guys an idea average in the alarm industry. So we sell alarm systems door to door and basically what that is is um, you, you go out there, the average rep will sell about 50 to 100 accounts in a year. So 
Um, what I did is my first year I sold 81, second year I did 135, third year I did 210, and third, fourth year I did 350. So every single year you can kind of start seeing a little bit of a growth that um, I you know, doubled my numbers, added on here and there. Just the big thing that switched for me was um, I actually started taking a lot more serious and started reaching out to other people who were really, really good mm -hmm. and really studying the art form. Because okay. what, I did, what I did in theater was I would study the comedians. I would study Rodney Dangerfield. I would see some of the stuff Dane Cook did, took a little bit of stuff here and there. I'd go and do a lot of the stuff like Wayne Brady and then Dave Chappelle was a huge influence yeah. for me. So I would copy some of my styles from them and I was like, dang, well, if I did that for theater and it worked well, why don't I apply that? To business, yeah. and so what I did was I started asking some of the legends of the industry, like the Jeremy Pixtons, the the Dan Spurgeons, the Rob Reimers, a lot of names of these people don't make any, you know, wouldn't know anything, but those sure. guys were the legends of my day yeah. that I looked up to. So I literally would go out and contact these people and say, "Hey, dude, um, how do I get better? What do I need to do?" And so um, what I did was is uh, I, I reached out to a couple of these guys and went and shouted them. One of the biggest switches I learned is I sat down with a guy named Jake Ellsworth. Okay. And Jake Ellsworth was Pinnacle's top sales rep. He was selling 300 to 400 every year. And I was like, dude, what's this guy doing? So I went out to where he was at, uh, somewhere in California, like two or three hours away from my house, slept on, his ba slept on the hotel floor, and went out and watched him for two or three days and just learned what he was doing. And it blew my mind. I was like, dang. So... Uh, seeing somebody go out there and do really, really good, I was like, okay, well, how do I apply this? So I started applying different things from different people, and then that's when I started really, really getting good. And then when I added my spruce of comedy on top of it, it that's when it really started taking over for me. Dang, so. That's awesome. And I'm more of a Cat Williams guy myself. Okay. Don't, don't hold that against me. But, um, <laughs> you know, everybody's got their own style, and it's true, man. Like, you know, people look at people that are successful, and they might say, oh, they were born – with the gift of gab or oh it's just who you know or oh he's a good looking guy or whatever and it's really the little things that, that kind of mm -hmm. add up right I think it's the fundamentals that a lot of people overlook especially in sales is if you want to be successful at this you just need to look at what the successful people are doing mimic and take as much as possible and be able to duplicate that yep. um, so you've obviously I mean we were kind of talking about it before but how many counts have you sold? How many doors would you say you've knocked on? Yeah, so this is now going into my 10th year doing it. So that was like six years ago, and it seems like yesterday. And a lot of these guys that I looked up to have now gone on to different industries, and I'm like, dang, well, I'm uh, one of the last couple of the original <laughs> Lone, Ranger. Lone Rangers that are still out here doing it. So um, the uh, I, I would have to say I've roughly knocked probably around three to 400,000 doors. Um, I've sold about t over 2,500 alarm systems in my career. Wow. So um, it's a huge feat that I'm super impressed with or, you know, I'm super proud of because a lot of the guys I've looked up to, they haven't even gotten to that point yet. And it's not that, you know, I'm any better than them, but just it's like, it's like I, I tell this to my friends, it's kind of like basketball. If you just keep shooting a free throw over and yeah. over again, after 10 years, you're going to get pretty good at it. Yeah. And what a lot of people don't realize is they could do the same thing, but they don't stick with something long enough where they're able to actually start seeing the results. Because yeah. I love theater, but guess what? I love this equally, if not more than I do theater now. And at first I hated it and I was like, dude, this sucks. I'm going out talking on, you know, knocking on people's doors. People are yelling at me. But now I've started to look at it on a different way. Okay, well maybe I'm not gonna make it on TV or theater or how I initially planned it out. But hey, every time I get to go and present to a customer, that's my own stage, I get a show. And if I do good, I get paid for it. Yeah. So now I can literally dictate which shows I go to, which kind of people I get paid from, and then um, when I go out and I recruit or I'm doing a presentation in front of a class or a fraternity, it's my own stage. So it's just kind of how you look at it. And then life, if you have that kind of attitude, you can really start figuring out how to make a bit good situation out of uh, you know, the cards that you're dealt. Sure, and that's what I've noticed too. It's like people don't stick with things long enough. No. It, especially in our day and age, we want like that instant gratification where it's like, oh, I knocked on, you know, I'll get new reps. Oh, I knocked on a few doors and well, this neighborhood sucks. It's like, yep. bro, you were out there for an hour and nobody that was going to make a decision was even home yet. Yep. Um, and you know, it's kind of cool probably for you to look back over a decade at something that I can't even say I've done one thing for a decade, um, you know, back to back. And it's like, I'm sure you, you look back, see the growth, see the progress. And yep. so out of the 10 years, what, what's been your funniest sales experience you've had obviously besides hoarders and crazy cat ladies and yeah, things that a lot are of crazy cat ladies a lot of hoarders, <laughs> so. but I had uh, so one of the funniest situations I've been in I like to I like to have fun so when I have guys shadow me I'll do silly things with customers and um, trying to loose up the events so I was with my buddy Brandon Garshka and um, he calls me up he's like hey I got a customer here so I was like all right dude let's uh, let's see how silly we can get this because when you start getting good at something if you loosen up and you're having fun 
that shows that you really know what you're doing. If you're still, if you're tight and you're all nervous when you do stuff, that means you truly don't know what you're doing. So with me, I was going to this customer's house and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get this in the bag. No problem. I'm going to, you know what? Let's see. I saw the Super Trooper movie yeah. and then, uh, yeah. meow. So right, it was yeah. like, meow, right hey, meow. So Super Troopers 2 is out today. Just throw a plug in yeah. for that. There you go. For Unofficial you. sponsor. Yeah. Meow. <laughs> right. Meow. <laughs> so these guys would go on um, the movie. I saw them and they would go to like pull a guy over and they'd say meow as many times as they can in front of uh, the perpetrator. Yeah. So when I was like, I was going to see if I can go to the customer's house and say, yep, yeah, as many times as I can. So started off at the door. I'm like, hey, what's going on, man? My name's Danny. What's your name? Oh, Joe. Okay, nice to meet you. Yep, yep, yep. So then I would start going over, and every time that I would uh, do a present, you know, go over different products. Yeah, so we put a camera here. You think that's a good idea? Okay, good. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> and so I'd start slowly saying yep, yep, yep as many times as I can. And I started off slow, then towards the end, I was almost to the point where I was literally yelling in the guy's face, yep, 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 yep. <laughs> And making the yeps rain. It was making it rain on the yaps. And, and like my buddy was over there literally just, Brandon was just crying the whole time we were doing it. And the customer, had, like I was doing it with such a straight face. He had no idea what was going on. And then like I actually recorded it too as well. It's on my Instagram if you want to follow me at Pessy Security. Um, I have a record right now. Anybody that records them saying yep more than I did during a video with their customer, I'll send them a hundred bucks. So, oh, nice. Uh, there's a little incentive well, for anybody yeah. out there. But um, literally sat there in front of the customer's face, recorded it, and at the end he's like, dang man, so like, how long have you had that problem? <laughs> I was like, I was actually born with it. Sorry, I get these ticks where I just start just saying yep, 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 yep. So <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of fun, man. And then I ended up getting a deal, the customer loved it, and yeah, it was a good time. That was one of my favorite memories that, uh, that I've had <laughs> knocking doors. Well, and that's the thing, dude, is like, as you go throughout life, even in a business, it's like things can get monotonous. Especially, yeah. I mean, especially in door to door, it's like you, you got, you know, it gets crazy like you know all the common objections like that's you know you know what pitches the pitchers are throwing you've practiced them right it doesn't mean you're always going to overcome them or hit the home run or a base hit even but it's like it gets a little monotonous where you're saying the same thing over and over they're saying the same responses over and over and you got to be able to break it up and have fun because over 10 years man especially you know you probably didn't grow up thinking you're going to be a professional door-to-door -door salesman right no clue now what did you want to be so uh, yeah wanted to be a comedian no so. joke I, uh, I studied it. I went to all the classes in Hollywood, and that's actually another reason why I stuck doing this job. It was because the theater classes to go and be a you know be in theater, you had to pay a lot of money. They're expensive. They're like for a six week training course, it's either between four to eight hundred dollars, wow. depending on the depending on the theater that you guys would that we'd go to and train at. So it costs a lot of money to do it, and so you're just kind of just sitting there crossing your fingers, hoping that somebody caught you. Or, Hopefully that somebody sees you and puts you on TV, and I didn't. I never really liked that because growing up, I you know had a lot of people always t doubting me and being in control of my situation sure. rather than me. And I really liked saying, okay, this is my destiny. This is how I'm going to be in charge of it, instead of me just waiting back, crossing my fingers, hoping someone thinks I'm funny, and then book me for for a commercial or booking for a TV show. Yeah. So I, my whole philosophy was, I was like, you know what, I'm going to stop theater. I figured if I can get successful enough, I can go out and produce my own movies. I go out and buy my own commercials, and I can host them myself. Yeah. So, you know, I, I did that with basketball. I was on a basketball team my senior year. I never got to play. It was really upsetting for me because all my friends were on the team and then, um, you know, they were all giving me crap because I was sitting on the bench and that really stuck with me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? I didn't like that feeling where somebody could dictate what my role is in life. And I was like, you know what? I'm never going to be in that situation. So I went out, started my own basketball team, joined leagues and started playing. And the same thing with theater. I went and auditioned for a professional company. I got turned down. So I was like, you know what? Instead of me just saying, forget, I'm going to yeah. go do something else. I went and started my own thing. And then, you know, it was scary at first, but we started to be rolling and it was one of the most gratifying thing ever that I was able to go out there and start my own thing right than crossing my fingers hoping for somebody else to give me my shot and that's a problem a lot of people look at is they're waiting for somebody else to go out and make their dreams a reality when yeah. realistically they could go out and it might not be the exact dream that they had but they could go out there and recreate it in their own way just like I have with selling alarms like every day I'm not on a professional theater but I'm on somebody's doorstep and that's my stage for the day yeah you know I'm out recruiting event I'm talking to 15 20 people that's my platform that's my stage and I'm gonna freaking rock it so even though it's not exactly how I seen it but now now I've been able to kind of perform my own way and be able to do it. So that's kind of what I've really taken away from it. And as people watching at home, like, you know, even though you have a dream, you know, go out and find it. And if someone's telling you no, figure out a way around it because those are the way people get successful. So that's my biggest thing that I've really been proud of myself for doing is not letting somebody, you know, t dictate me and tell my dreams and, you know, tell me what to do. Yeah. And that's something we were talking about earlier kind of off the script was, 
just the system that we live in. And mm-hmm. I talked about it in my last podcast episode. It's it's designed for you to be like a sheep, as mm-hmm. you like to call them. It's designed for you, maybe not to fail, but to be dependent upon the government. You yeah. know, um, people with you know, like we talked about disorders and all these other things. I'll just take a pill for this and take a pill for that instead of like actually trying to figure out what what's going on inside of me and maybe what things am I doing. We talked about soda, some something as simple as drinking pop or soda. Ever since I've stopped doing that, you notice what it was doing to your body. But when you're in the situation, you had no idea. Yeah. And I guess for you, like. What's kind of the biggest thing, if I had to say, okay, that's Danny Pessy, um, this is him, how, how would you want the world to know or look at you? Well, I, uh, I, I just like, I, I'm done very, very well in my personal sales, but I've done it my way. So I've figured out how to go out and achieve what I've wanted to do and by doing it my way. Like Frank Sinatra said, I did it my way. Like if I'm gonna be successful, it's gonna be by my rules. And I've done it where I've been able to put on really good quality, honest business over the years, yeah. but I've had fun doing it. Like there's very few guys that I've known that have had such an amazing quality of life that are, are super successful. And it's yeah. because I'm doing it by my books and by my way and it's been I've been able to to a degree replicate it and have guys that have learned from me and been able to have their own successes doing, you know, some of the stuff that I've taught them. And that's just one of my best things is I've been able to figure out a way to have fun while doing it and achieve my dreams by um, working hard and figuring out how I can make this job my own stage. And so that's, (laughs) so that's the way I've looked at it. And so, you know, the, the work ethic, the biggest thing that was me is that, you know, even though it was funny, uh, and growing up naturally that was something that was a gift to me what wasn't was work ethic and that's really what separate what I feel has separated me from going from good to great yeah. it's the work ethic was something I really had to work on and so some people might not naturally be comedians or naturally be funny or be you know um, good with customers back and forth but the work ethic I honestly believe is the biggest attribute to being successful because you can learn to be funny you can learn to use different techniques to lo- you know loosen up the the selling process so the customers more like to say yes but if you don't develop that work ethic that's one of the biggest things that is really going to hold you back in life so for example I touched on this earlier my basketball experience like I my first couple of years all I could think about was my basketball coach whenever I gave up whenever I would sit on the, the, the bench or whenever I like didn't want to knock any more doors I remember back in the head how it feels because I, I feel like that when I don't want to work hard that's like him in my ear saying that's it I knew you were going to be a loser and that really fired me up and so I, I really use that as fuel to push myself to go out and be more successful. And so a lot of the times people don't have that circumstances in their life to motivate them. They have to go out and find it. So there's two re- ways that people will really start becoming successful in life is either something physically happens to them where they'll make a change or they surround themselves with the right people. So for, let me give you the first example is let's say if I told you tomorrow, yeah. if you ever ate another cheeseburger, you would die. Do you think you'd ever eat another cheeseburger? No. 100%. So like cancer, if the, you know, that's a big thing that changes people's eating habits, their lives completely. So a lot of times people don't have that because in today's society, it's very easy to survive without having huge problems or something, you know, that can change their life dramatically. So they get caught into this, hey, I'm comfortable and I'm going to keep doing my own thing and just keep sliding by and then eventually, you know, I'm just comfortable and I don't need to push myself. The next place is where you're going to be successful is proximity. That's when you surround yourself with the right people. And if you start surrounding yourself with the right people, that's when you're going to start elevating your game. So what I did was when I started communicating with these successful people, I started elevating my game so I could start getting a lot better. And then when I added my own spruce on it, that was where it really started taking off for me. That's awesome. So. And I think it's important. And that actually brings me full circle to why I'm here with Be Legendary and how this all started. It's something I've wanted to do for a long time, but I didn't have in my own mind I had limitations like I so I tried to write a book when I was 24 um, I'd been through some things personally and it, it was more of a healing thing but I remember I sent it out to some friends to read it and they're like wow this is really good and then one of my friends sent it to another friend and and she was an author and she actually really liked it but her son who's a teenage kid she's like oh I bet he could learn from this right some teenage punk kid and he's like oh this sucks. like he wrote a review and it was just like oh it sucks he's like all about himself and blah 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 and you know, it really kind of took the wind out of my cells. I let this 18, 19 year old kid demotivate me. So I'm like, well, yeah, what if people aren't gonna like it? What if they're not gonna like me? And I kind of viewed the podcast as the same thing as, you know, you have these thoughts, why do people wanna listen to, to me? And 
you know, what I know is everybody has their own story and, and the podcast isn't just about me. It's like, I want to bring Danny on and the other guests not, yeah, sure. Is it helping me? Of course it is. But number two, I'm also being able to network and rub shoulders with the best people that are out there. And, and it allows you to tell your story, man. And it's mm-hmm. like freak out here. Everybody's so negative and brings me to the 10 X growth con. Uh, the second one, this is where it really hit that I need to do this. It was Naveen Jain. Oh, I don't yeah. know if you remember that. Oh, this know. guy, and I didn't even know who he was, but he's like on track to be the world's first trillionaire. And so I'm sitting there, he's talking, and, and he's working on curing cancer. He's also working on mining products from the moon. And I'm like sitting here, I'm like, okay, I have reps that are wondering if they should go out and knock doors for three or four hours in a day. I'm wondering if I should make my own bed when I get up in the morning. And homie's over here mining the moon to preserve life as we know it. Mm-hmm. And that's when it clicked. It's like, man, number one, life is short. Timing is short. He's from India, an immigrant. It's like, dude, if he can do it, maybe I'm not going to hit that level, yep. but I can do my own as well. And just seeing, you know, Grant and Brad Lee and um, Ed Milet, Andy Frasilla, just all those people sharing their stories that it's like, really, they're no different than anybody that's listening. They just stuck with it. Yep. And that's the key. And that's what this podcast is about is it's easy to look at Danny like, oh, you know, you're going to go recruit a new rep and they're going to hear, oh, Danny Pessy this and he made this much money, sold this many. But bro, they weren't out there your first year, your first day on the doors, your 73rd day in the summer, and you're like, shit, this is hard, this is hot. Yeah. What the hell am I doing? Was there a point in time that kind of sticks out to you that you thought about quitting or oh, yeah. you wasn't sure if it was for you? Yep, so I remember my first year I went out, I went out with my buddy Parker Helene, Julian, uh, not Julian, uh, Daniel Huddleston, just a couple of my buddies from my hometown, and uh, Dario, and so these three, my best friends, we went out there and we started selling, and then slowly, after two or three weeks got in, we were in Seattle, Washington, and this is a, not the typical market you find in the yeah. South. These people in Seattle, they're, it's ranked like the most miserable city because the weather's so crazy, and so these people, when you knock on the doors, it wasn't like, no, not interested, it was like, no, F you, get wow. off my property. All so, these Seahawks fans up there. Yeah, nutcases, oh, sure. dude. Like, they love their football and they hate their door-to-door sales. probably just sad the, the Supersonics left. Yeah, they, they were so upset because they'd look at me and they'd be like, dude, this guy could be in the basketball team, and but he failed miserably, <laughs> so now he's selling stuff in my house. But so I, what I did was I was getting hammered, and then I remember all my buddies started quitting except for two or three of them, and I remember I was I got done with this, done got knocking doors. I went to this appointment at 9 o'clock, and I'm like, dude, this guy's going to get it. I get to the house, and he's like, nope, I changed my mind. Get out of here. So I ended up like being like, dang, this freaking sucks. My buddy called me, says, hey, I'm going home, and I go into a Wendy's bathroom, and I go in there, and I'm like soaking wet because it was raining, and I just start freaking crying, man. I'm like, dude, I don't think I can do this, man. I think I'm going to quit. And then I sucked it up, got cleaned off. I dried off my entire clothes, my socks, in the air dryer. So I don't know if you've ever been there. That's rock bottom, man. It was rough, (laughs) and I called my dad. I'm like, dad send me a jacket because I didn't have money for a jacket. He sent me up a jacket. I'm like, I'm going to stick this out. So I never experienced that kind of rejection before in my life, but something switched to me and I was like, dude, that's actually really cool. I've never experienced this before, even though it hurt. I can respect that and I want to go out and see if I can get through this and accomplish it because I'm not the kind of guy that's going to quit. So I ended up, you know, after I got that out of my system, I cried but I made the decision right then and there while I was blow drying my underwear in the dryer because I was soaking wet yeah. where I was like, you know what, I'm going to make this work and I did and, you know, since then I'm just, I'm not the kind of guy to quit. I think I'm very, one of the only guys that have actually never left their company in 10 years. I've never switched companies. I've had companies that I've worked for gone out of business <laughs> but I've never switched. Yeah. I've never gotten any special deals or anything like that. I've Instead of looking at exterior circumstances, I looked at interior circumstances. It's what can Danny do to get better? What can I do to improve my skill set? What can I go out do in the marketplace to better myself? And that was just, instead of looking outside, I looked to the inside. And I think that's really what's helped me get to the next level in my game. Not only looking to improve my mindset, improve my skill set, but also improve my surroundings. Because that's the biggest thing that guys forget about doing is, hey, who are your friends that you're hanging out with? How can yeah. you go out and achieve more if you're not hanging around the right type of people? And Yeah, and that, that's crazy because, you know, I, even I didn't know that story about you. And it's like you... You look at the last 10 years and, and what if you would have quit? Mm-hmm. You know, you go from amateur comedian to crying in a Wendy's bathroom wondering what the hell am I doing with my life? It wasn't life? funny. No. To, it was to funny. literally making millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. And that never would have happened had you made a different decision in that Wendy's bathroom. Yeah. And life is a lot of small decisions, but there are all these breaking points where it's like, you know, who is Danny Pessy and what's mm-hmm. he going to be? And you, you could have went home. I had friends that went home my first summer where you can call your dad say, 
freaking throw me a jacket and let's roll, baby. Yeah. Um, and one thing I've always been impressed about Danny and why I want to have him on is he's just sincere. Um, in the sales world, no matter what sales industry you're in, I, I think it's pretty easy because of this job is you versus the customer and it's kind of you versus you. It's easy to get wrapped up in yourself. But I've also learned, yeah, you can have this personal success and you can make money, but eventually it wears off a little bit to where it's like, now, how can I help other people? Which kind of leads into the next point. You got a pretty sick iPad case there. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to tell the people a little bit about what you're doing? Yeah. So um, I basically developed an iPad case for our line of work, the entrepreneur, the success person who's driven to go out there and run their business off their iPad. We're starting to notice a lot more people are going to digital tablets now. And I personally use a digital tablet as well to make my sales and so um, what I found was is throughout the day my iPad started dying and um, it would enable me from getting more deals so I'd have to sit in my car and charge it or walk to a door with my you know cord sticking out charging it, it looked really unprofessional because the customers like dude how are you coming to my house and you're not even prepared with your iPad dying so what I did is I designed an iPad case that's perfect for um, perfect for our line of work, where essentially it has a charger built into it. So this is called Zola, it's called the Zola iPad case. Zola Devices is the name of the company. This is the Zola. What it basically is, is an iPad case that has a charger built into it, that has a cord while you're knocking, instead of having something in your pocket, sits here and actually will be able to charge your iPad from wherever, while you're out there knocking doors. So you're still able to look professional and still be able to keep your iPad charged because how much money is having a dead iPad case charging us, especially if you're doing digital contracts. And if you start seeing your iPad battery life dwindle, you start using it less, which then affects your focus. And then all of a sudden you're not pushing as hard because you're afraid your iPad's going to die. And then now you're uh, it's five or six o'clock, seven o'clock at night and your iPad's dead. You can't make any more deals. So right now I'm able to sell this iPad at 69 bucks. We have a Kickstarter going on right now where uh, I think we're letting them go for like 39 bucks for the first first couple hundred so um, if you guys are have an iPad this is definitely something you got to use because um, it's going to be able to be a huge game changer it's got places for your brochures it's got a card swiper it's got a charger it's got a place for your business cards check all the brochures and stuff like that so it's been really really fun I've used it for the last year and a half and so now we're finally just after 10 X con it was just yeah. funny I was like I've had this idea I've had the prototype and I'm like dude I just need to do it so after that it really put a fire under my butt just kind of like you did with this podcast dude just make it happen so we'll see if it pans out you know I think this is an amazing product we've got a lot of good guys on our team working on making this come to reality so um, if you like the stuff that I've said or have an iPad then you think this would benefit you I'd love for you to support it follow my Instagram at uh, Pessy Security and the link is in my profile and you can click it and make a donation and we also have ones that you can customize so if you have a team or a company where you want your co company logo on the case we can customize that for you too as well so um, feel free to shoot out follow me on Facebook uh, Instagram I got a Facebook page called Dan the Alarm Man and uh, that's you. basically yeah real clever right so pesky security yep it was originally Dan the funny man but that didn't get any likes so Dan no, the Alarm Man <laughs> no unfortunately yep. well yeah and, you know for me that's just kind of what it comes down to is you can sit there and worry and wish and hope like I'm waiting for this I'm waiting for that but you got to go make it happen because you know what I realized after the 10x growth con is nobody's gonna give me permission nobody's mm -hmm. gonna come and say Tyler you should do this podcast like yep. you'd be really great yep. so, and then again nobody was telling me not to because nobody knew the idea it was just me and it's like I kind of just well after I did the first episode I was just like oh now what do we do for number two you know mm -hmm. it's like you just start and you don't have a way to quit it's like yourself too you, uh, hey we threw the Zola up there now we got to go with it yep. and, and at the end of the day so man i appreciate you coming on dropping yeah, some knowledge on these peeps um you know like i said at the end of the day it's all about who you associate with and i think you know i've taken a lot from this interview and hopefully you guys have as well so thanks for checking out the be legendary podcast once again follow my man uh danny pessy on instagram pessy security right there baby uh on Can't facebook dan the alarm man and one thing just to plug his page even he puts out great content all the time that no matter what sales industry you're in it's going to have it, you know, 10 years of doing door to door cold calling sales, no matter if you're cold calling on the phone, on the doors, at a booth somewhere, there's a lot you're going to be able to take from it. And the content he's put out is better than most, if not everybody I've seen out there in the alarm world and door to door. So just to plug for that, follow my guy. Thank you guys for checking it out. Remember, you can be basic, you can be average, or you can be legendary. Baby. Count it up, count it up, count it up, count it, count it up, count it up, count it up. Count it up. Count it up, count it up, count it up, count it up, count it.